Hi, I'm Rhonda. I'm Angie, and we are Adventures in Nomadness. We had a fire in the cabin, and not the good kind. We're fine, but we'd like to share what happened and what we learned. It was scary. So we're going to talk about the fire we had, not a good fire, but before we do that, I wanted them to talk a little bit about why fire is a big deal. We're off grid and the two big things that you worry about when you're off grid this far away from help is having a medical emergency or having a fire. And fire is a big deal. We're, we're surrounded by trees. If a fire gets out of control, it doesn't just hurt you potentially, but it hurts a lot of other property owners or people. So we've always taken fire very seriously. And as he's going to talk a little bit about the safety things that we have in place before any of this happened. And we have a, a smoke detector, which doubles as a carbon monoxide detector. Plus we have a secondary carbon monoxide detector because we have so many propane appliances in the cabin. We have a very large fire extinguisher in case we need it. Uh, one of the things that helped us out the most in this situation was a uh, chimney. Uh, basically, it's a big stick. You throw it in the fireplace and that puts out the fire in your chimney. Uh, so that worked out great. We also have an uh, emergency ladder that we could use from upstairs. So if we get trapped in a fire, we could still use our large window to get out. Uh, the other thing we have is a, a gauge on uh, on the chimney itself, so that tells us when the temperature of the chimney gets out of hand, and that was a really good indication for us of what was happening. So here's what happened. We had started a fire in the morning, and like we always do, and uh, before long the fire kind of got really big in the box. I had gone upstairs and it was a little smoky up there, the smoke alarm hadn't gone off though at that point. But I came back downstairs and I looked at the gauge on the chimney and it was high, really high, way higher than it ever was. And I'm like, oh shit, I think we got a problem here. And immediately realized that we did have a chimney fire. Yeah, there's a big red mark. If you get into that, you know you have an issue. Right, because our chimney doesn't run that hot because it's double walled. And so I used the, the chimney fire extinguishing stick, got that lit and threw it in the wood stove and the temperature started coming down pretty much immediately. Rhonda at that point decided to go outside and look at the, the cap and immediately noticed that there was flames coming out of the very top part of the chimney. And and I, didn't, I didn't capture that on film. I just ran out and checked it and there was about six inches of flame coming out and over the top at that point. Right, I went out a little bit later and caught just a little bit, but uh, at that point we decided to call the fire department as a precaution. All right, very scary morning, we had a chimney fire Fortunately, had uh, this chimney fire stop stick that we were able to throw in the chimney, but we had flames coming out the top. I think we had too much creosote built up, which kind of crazy after four months and we've been using the creosote sleeping logs. Uh, obviously, that didn't help. But uh, fire department decided to err on the side of massive caution, and the fire department's on their way out. I think it's out, but it's still smoking. Fortunately, the cabin hasn't caught on fire or anything, but it did get pretty smoky in there. Now we are in the fire service district, but barely. We are uh, literally at the at the very aft corner of where they will respond to. So the chief came out with his uh, heat 
monitoring thing and uh, by that point the fire was uh, pretty much gone out and was pretty much out um, not, we didn't have flames coming out of the, the cap at that point but uh, he stuck around and, and did call for uh, one of the engines to come and they actually did make it down our driveway which is pretty narrow and just kind of on standby but they did a really great job of you know just making sure that the the flames were out and sticking around to make sure the temperature had come down it wasn't going to reignite and then they basically got into the box and took out any last wood that was in there and ashes and dumped that out and make sure that uh, we were safe at that point yeah so then we talked to them about you know what is it what could we have possibly done uh, better or that if there was something that we had done badly and I mean they looked at our wood they said the wood looked plenty dry and I would say it looks really dry but I started to read a little bit more and I got out our uh, moisture meter that we used for the siding um, and checked and what I was finding is that you don't want to be above like 25% moisture and some of the wood was right on that edge and I have a feeling that especially cottonwood it some of it felt really heavy and we were not measuring that and I have a feeling that it was moist now why is that a problem when you have wet wood it cools the smoke that's going up your stack because of the moisture it actually reduces it. I don't remember the percentage but instead of burning hot around like 250 degrees you're going to reduce that because of the moisture that's condensating and that along with the fact that we've had warmer weather and so we've been kind of burning a slow fire which is really kind of a no-no um, we shouldn't have been doing that you either should just burn it hot and let it go out um, and then start it again later or, um, or not burn it at all. And if the fire wasn't enough, but that wasn't all for the day. We are using our propane heater as our backup. It works great, but uh, after the firefighters left, it was about 45 degrees in here. The door opened and everything. So we had this on full blast for quite some time. Then all of a sudden, beep, 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 beep. Oh my God. So carbon monoxide detector went off. Uh, we had it up on the refrigerator and uh, I ended up turning this down and then putting the carbon monoxide detector outside so that it would clear, open up the windows in here. And so after some time of, of uh, you know, turning this down and then turning it on medium, uh, it, it was fine. So we've been running it on less. I think it was just the fact that we had it on so high for so long. Not only that, when I was looking at the directions on a secondary carbon monoxide detector that we bought, it says you, you should have it 20 feet away from your furnace. Well, our cabin's only 12 feet wide, so it is, uh, you know, fairly close to it. Uh, we have you know, upstairs the smoke detector slash carbon monoxide detector close to where we sleep, and then we have a secondary one down here as a backup because we're a little paranoid after it went off for so long. We haven't had any other issues since then. So do not ever, um, you know, one tip of advice is don't ever ignore that carbon monoxide det uh, detector going off. It really is a sign that something's going on since it's a, it, you don't smell it. You don't know that something's going on. It, it is towards the end of winter. So we're kind of fortunate that this happened when it did, I guess, if you can be fortunate. Um, and again, um, we're just really lucky in a lot of ways. Yeah, totally lucky. There was no damage done to the cabin whatsoever. We were never in harm's way, nor were the puppies. We got them out and in the truck uh, while the fire department was there. So we'd love to hear from you in the comments below. What is your what is your disaster plan? What's your fire plan? What are your safety measures that you have in place? What if there's an earthquake? So put those in the comments below on what your plan is.